Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. If you'd like to know the absolute latest on any commercial real estate related topics, check out our on demand show podcast. There are recent shows on senior housing, hospitality, and the major sectors like retail, industrial, and multifamily. Just grab your phone, tablet, or computer, visit iTunes or the show website, Commercial Real Estate Show. Com. Well, today we're exploring the U.S. office market. Please welcome my next guest, Calvin Schnoor. He is Senior Economist with NAREIT. Calvin, thanks for joining us today. Good morning, Michael. Thanks for having me here. Well, we appreciate it. And uh, you guys do a great job uh, following the REITs and, and providing information on the REITs. And so how did office REITs perform in the first quarter? Office REITs had a darn good first quarter. Office REITs, their total return was up 11 and quarter percent. That's 11 and quarter percent just in the quarter. Um, that's mirroring some of the strong performance that we've seen in REITs overall. If you look at all REITs, their first quarter performance was up almost 10 percent, a little bit less than 10 percent. Now, that's good not just in uh, aggregate to overall terms, but in comparison to the S&P, where the total return was up uh, a bit less than 2 percent, one and three quarters percent, it was a really strong performance. Yeah, that's excellent. So when you look back at the the trends over the last few years, um, the REITs have done well in the office office sector REITs. Um, they, are they just ticking up a little bit more than the others right now? Is that what you see? Office REITs have been have been quite strong over the past couple of years. You know, it's important to understand one thing about REITs is that they do give a strong income return through their dividends. And that actually tripped up the sector as a whole in the middle of last year. When the Federal Reserve started talking about when they might taper and what their eventual exit from their current stimulative policy would be, uh, the REIT sector sold off quite a bit. REITs as a whole were down about five, you know, down several percentage points in the second quarter and third quarter because a lot of people looked at them and they said, well, they give a lot of income. They give a strong dividend yield. Uh, maybe they're like fixed income and fixed income is going to sell off because, uh, you know, bonds fall when interest rates rise. What the market wasn't paying attention to at the time was REITs also, they're not fixed income. Their income is based on the rents. And Walter was just talking earlier in your show that we're seeing strong rent growth across the board. Uh, he was talking about office REITs. We're seeing strong rent growth uh, across many sectors. And so what you're seeing in the first quarter is just a re reaffirmation that this strong rent growth and uh, improving prices of the buildings that they own is really boosting the REITs overall return. Okay. And as an economist, uh, you track a, a lot of things that affect the office market in particular, like, like jobs and, and the economic recovery. So, so what do you expect for the office sector uh, performance moving forward and how that might affect the office REITs? I wouldn't expect a rip-roaring start. We're going we're to see continued moderate growth here. That's just reflecting the overall recovery, uh, the overall economic recovery. Office REITs, obviously, office Properties are driven by job growth, and one of the hallmarks of this economic recovery is the job growth has just been struggling coming along. But we are seeing a lot of improvement. What we're seeing now, once you discount the, the, the weather effects from the early winter, uh, midwinter this year, we're seeing job growth trending at 200,000 a month or, or maybe even stronger, and that's up quite a bit from 160,000 or so uh, a year or two ago. So we're seeing the job growth that's going to generate the, the need for square footage and the need for absorption. And as that brings rents down, or sorry, as that brings vacancy rates down, we're going to see more rent growth. So I'm optimistic that we're going to see not a fast acceleration, but rather we're in for a long, steady improvement in this sector. Okay. So that in turn should uh, help the office REITs uh, perform well. I mean, if you listen to, to, to Walter's idea that a lot of these uh, leases coming up, uh, when you look at the office market overall or under market, then we should see some good rate increases, and that should have helped uh, these uh, REITs, shouldn't it? That's right. And the office sector tends to have fairly long-term leases, so the rent rolls occur, occur fairly slowly. Uh, so that's another reason why you don't see it getting into your current rents fairly quickly. Of course, the stock market price of the REIT is looking forward saying, what is the rent growth going to be not just in 2014, 
but also 2015 and 2016. And right now, there's still a lot of vacancy in many markets. Uh, some markets are tightening up more than others, particularly in the, the CBD markets. Um, but as, as the vacancy rates come down more, landlords are going to have even more pricing power when they have the rent rollover. Uh, so again, the REIT performance is looking forward, not just for what we're expecting over the next quarter or the next year, but two or three years ahead, we're seeing clear sailing for the sector. Okay. And speaking of looking ahead, do you expect this low level of, of new supply to continue? And what effect might uh, new supply have on the market? You know, it's interesting. Walter was talking earlier how supply is ramping up. And I get a lot of questions, um, not just about office. We also talk about multifamily and apartments. And that's an area where there's more concern about the new supply. But you hear it in office as well. People are saying that the supply is up. And they say, Yo, what's, what's, what's your outlook here? Um, you have to keep in mind a, a longer term perspective. The new supply, if we look, I'm going to look at a different measure. I'm an economist, so I, I follow different things than what Walter does. Rather than the starts or the square feet uh, that are under construction, if we look at the actual dollars spent, the, uh, the construction put in place on office buildings, um, it's up quite a bit. It, it's up 60% uh, from its trough in 2011. So you have seen a strong ramping up, but it's still 40% below its peak uh, in 2007. Uh, we've got a long way to go before we get a really strong market here. You know, I'm an economist a lot of times. Uh, hate, hate, to, hate to dig on my own profession, but people say, uh, how is the new supply? And it's like someone asks an economist, how's your family? And he says, compared to what? Well, the compared to what here is what's the level of new supply that we need given the size of the economy uh, the size of the employment base, uh, the size of the business base that needs office space. And that's continuing to grow. And we're going to need even more space than they're constructing right now. Okay. And are developers just cautious or are there other reasons for the uh, low levels of new supply? Developers are cautious, that's for sure. And that's not just developers. We see that. You look at business surveys, you look at any type of business. Uh, there are very few areas that are saying, we have uh, full speed ahead. So there is a lot of caution. Uh, another factor is there has not been a whole lot of new capital in the market. Um, you've seen uh, only this past six months or so a significant increase in bank lending for commercial real estate. Uh, the CMBS market has been providing financing, but most of that is still just to refinance the seven-year CMBS that were issued uh, during the boom period. You're not seeing a whole lot of new financing coming from the CMBS. Now REITs are another exception to this. Uh, REITs overall have access to the equity markets and they've actually raised record amounts of capital uh, the past two years. $76 billion in 2013 was a record amount. So they're bringing in new capital, uh, but it's, it's really not much compared to the overall, uh, they, and they're not doing the development. They're actually purchasing new, new buildings. As far as developers, you're not seeing a whole flood of new capital, but it's improving, it's improving. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's interesting. And, uh, and guys, if you want to know more about REITs and what's going on, uh, visit uh, REIT.com. REIT does a, a great job. There's a lot of great information there. And Calvin, thanks for joining us today. We sure appreciate uh, you being with us. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Well, thank you. And then we're going to stay with us. We're going to have more on the U.S. office market. We're going to have some tips and strategies. We're also going to have a CPM uh, out of California that's give some great tips on operations. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. Thanks. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Atlanta Office Liquidators, new and used furniture liquidators, France Media, publications and conferences, Florida International University, Real Crowd, and Bull Realty Commercial Brokerage, a great place to do business. For more information on these companies or to access additional podcasts, videos, or blogs, visit commercialrealestateshow.com.